wish you could send back an investigative journalist to do a report on Jesus? Well, the Gospel of Luke was written for you. Today, we'll look into Luke on the Bible Brief. So we've been through the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, and today we're going to explore the Gospel of Luke. Now, you may be doubting what I said at the beginning of this podcast, that Luke is like an investigative journalist. But you just listen to yourself the beginning of Luke's Gospel. It says this, Many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as the original eyewitnesses and servants of the word handed them down to us. So it also seemed good to me, since I have carefully investigated everything from the very first, to write to you an orderly sequence, most honorable Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things about which you have been instructed. See what I mean? Luke says that he himself has thoroughly investigated everything from the very first so that he can prepare an orderly sequence of Jesus and his ministry. That's largely Luke's purpose. He doesn't make us do investigative work ourselves to know what he wants to do here. That said, there are two other things I don't want you to miss in this introduction. First, Luke says that others have also undertaken a similar task, which was to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us. That is, Part of Luke's motive in writing was to ensure that the reader understood that this wasn't a new story, but it was a story of fulfillment of an older story, the Old Testament and its promises. Second, Luke has a specific audience here, a man named Theophilus, who apparently has learned about Jesus before, but Luke wants to bolster his learning with this gospel account. Now, we don't know much about this person, Theophilus, but it's likely that he was some sort of official in the Roman government at the time of the writing of this gospel. Luke is writing to him, and specifically anchoring himself to how Jesus has fulfilled older promises in the Old Testament. As a side note, Luke also knew that there would be other readers of this gospel, so his purpose extends to all readers, not just to Theophilus. So you and I are part of the audience for Luke's gospel too. So these observations set us up for looking into how Luke accomplishes his goal in the gospel of Luke. And we will summarize his goal like this. Luke wants to demonstrate his inquisitiveness and his investigative quality so that Theophilus will be assured that Jesus is the fulfillment of Old Testament promises and prophecies. Now, if that's Luke's goal, he accomplishes it by looking into two main themes from the Old Testament and one theme to appeal specifically to Theophilus and others. So the first two are from the Old Testament. First, that Jesus was going to suffer and resurrect from the dead according to the Old Testament scriptures. Second, that Jesus should be proclaimed to all nations according to the Old Testament scriptures. And third, the theme to appeal specifically to Theophilus and others is this, that Jesus came for self-denying sinners and not the self-righteous. So let's start with the theme of Jesus suffering and rising from the dead according to the Old Testament. We can see this theme from start to finish in Luke's gospel, and I want to just give you a smattering of verses where Jesus says this. Out of Luke 9.22, Jesus says, It's necessary that the Son of Man suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed, and be raised on the third day. Again, when Jesus says Son of Man, he's talking about himself. Next, we see Luke 17.25. It's necessary that he, that is Jesus, suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. After his resurrection among the disciples in Luke 24, 44 through 46, Jesus says this, These are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He also said to them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. As you can tell through this gospel, Luke quotes Jesus a bunch of times with a particular focus on the fact that Jesus must suffer and rise from the dead according to the Old Testament. While Luke doesn't often record the specific Old Testament texts that Jesus fulfills with his suffering, death, and resurrection, he ensures that we know one critical fact that the death and resurrection of Jesus were in fulfillment of Old Testament predictions. Think about our example at the end of the last episode on Mark where you read from Isaiah 53. There are many more examples like this where the Old Testament is clearly saying that the Messiah must suffer and then rise from the dead. 
The next theme in Luke is that Jesus' gospel should be expressed to all nations in accordance with the Old Testament. If we continue what Jesus was saying from Luke 24, here's what we read. He also said to them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Don't miss what Jesus says here. He starts with this. This is what is written. Not only does he appeal to the Old Testament for his suffering and resurrection, but he also appeals to the Old Testament to show that the good news of Jesus must be proclaimed to all nations and not to the Jews only. It's important to note that Luke essentially bookends his gospel to emphasize this point. In Luke 2, Jesus is identified as a light for revelation to the Gentiles, non-Jews, and glory to your people Israel, the Jews. This is said about eight days after Jesus is born. We know that Luke doesn't want us to miss that Jesus is for both Jews and Gentiles according to the Old Testament, and so he puts it at the beginning in Luke 2 and at the end in Luke 24. Now I want to recall something to your mind. Do you remember from our 10 steps where this promise of blessing to all nations of the world was first explicitly recorded in Scripture? It was in the promises to Abraham in the Abrahamic covenant that eventually one of Abraham's seed was going to bless all the nations of the world. Jesus fulfills that promise and blesses all nations with his gospel of salvation from sin. He is the fulfillment of Old Testament promises to bless the Jews and the Gentiles, encompassing all the nations of the world. Finally, let's get to the third theme, and that's this that Jesus came for self-denying sinners and not the self-glorifying righteous. Luke records Jesus' illustration of this in a parable. Remember, a parable is a short story with a point. He shares a parable of two men, a Pharisee of the religious elite and a tax collector who most people hated. Listen closely. This is from Luke 18. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee was standing and praying like this about himself. God, I thank you I am not like other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of everything I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other, because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. One lesson of Jesus that Luke emphasizes over and over again through his gospel is this. Jesus is not interested in us trying to impress him with our good works and righteous acts. In fact, if we think we are righteous, we risk missing the fact that we're sinners like everyone else. Instead, what Jesus wants from us is humility enough to recognize our state before God. That just like Adam and Eve way back in the beginning, we're all separated from God because of our sin. We're sick with sin. It's when we humbly realize this that we come to a place where we can see Jesus for who He really is. The Savior not just of all nations, but of me personally. It's when we humbly see our own sin that we can truly see our Savior. The historian Luke interviewed many eyewitnesses and did his own investigative work to ensure that Theophilus and we could have an orderly account of the good news of Jesus. Good news that involves the Old Testament fulfillment of Jesus' death, resurrection, and proclamation of the gospel to all nations. And perhaps the best news, that Jesus came into the world to save sinners not the self-righteous. Luke helps us see that Jesus was for you and me, and he makes it so personal that Theophilus, whose name can be translated one who loves God, might also be a descriptor of every one of the readers of Luke's gospel, one who loves God. Next time, we're going to focus on the last of the four gospels, the gospel of John, where we're going to see Jesus in a whole new light. 
Thanks for listening to The Bible Brief. Do you have a question about the Bible? It could be featured on a future show. You can submit a question by going to our website, BibleLiteracyFoundation.com, and clicking on the podcast page. There you can submit a text or audio question. We'd love to hear from you. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation, dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2022.